In this video, we'll be looking at the date add function where you can subtract or add date or time. So why do we need a function? Well, let's have a look at what we can do in Excel. We've got a date here. If I wanted to go on to the next date, then I would add one to it. If I wanted to go to next week, I would add seven to it. If I wanted to go to the previous date, I would subtract one from it. And if I wanted to add an hour, I would add one twenty-fourth to it. So all of these look fairly simple. However, we cannot do this in SQL Server. So let's see what we can do. So what I've got here, I have created a variable. The variable is called my date. I've declared it as date time two. This allows me to go to seven decimal places in the second. And I have given it a date and time, the 3rd of April 2025, just past noon. So I've declared this in ANSI, A-N-S-I format. However, I refer to it as Japanese format, though they also use it in China, South Korea, among other places. So we have year, month, day, and then a space. Although you could have the letter T if you want it in ISO format. And then hour, minute, second, and fractions of second. And all I've done now is just selected it. So there is my output. So let's say I wanted to do exactly the same thing, but I wanted to add a day. So let's see if this works. And the answer is no. Date time two, which is what the variable is, is incompatible with int, which is what the number one is. So I cannot add a day like this. So what can I do? Well, what I have to use is the date add function. So the date add function has got three arguments, three things I need to insert. The first thing is, well, what am I using? So do I want to add a day, a month, a quarter, a year, an hour, a minute, a second? So I put that first. Now, here is the first trick. You might think that you would put it in single quotation marks like any other speech or text or string. You don't. You just type it as is. And you can see the computer is trying to auto-complete. And we can see lots of different things that we can use. So we can use year, quarter, month, day of year, which may be more useful with other functions rather than this. Day, week, weekday, hour, minute, second, millisecond, microsecond, and nanosecond. So let's increase it by a day. Then we need to say how many we want to increase it by. So I want to increase it by one day. And then we say, what do we want to increase? We we'll want to increase what is here. So my variable. So I'm just going to say this is the adjusted date. And let's see what we've got. So now you can see we've gone from the 3rd of April to the 4th of April. Similarly, if I want to change it by two days, I can just say two as the second argument and we go to the 5th of April. If I wanted to go backwards, so I want the previous day, well, I can do that by saying minus one. So even though this is date add, if you have a negative, then you can use it as a sort of date subtract. Now I could also use day of year that will give me exactly the same result. So instead of using day, what I can also say is week. So now we go forward by seven days. Month. So how many days we go forward depends on how many days there are in the month. So if, for instance, I was in February, then we'd be going forward either 28 or 29 days. If I'm in March, we'll be going forward 31 days. And if I'm in April, we'll be going forward 30 days. Now we could say quarter. So that's the equivalent of three months and year. So 12 months, obviously. We go to now the 3rd of April, 2026. If we don't want to change the date, but we want to change the time, we can still use date add. So here is the hour. So now we go from 12.34 to 1.34 in the afternoon. And similarly, we've got minute, second, and millisecond. 
Now you can also use abbreviations. So for instance, year could be YY or YY, YY. They'll both give you exactly the same answer. Quarter would be Q or QQ, month, MM or M, day, D. Hour would be HH, minute, there's the difficult one. It's either MI for minute or it's N. So why not M? Because M is month, so N is minute. And then second is S or SS, and then MS for millisecond, microsecond, and nanosecond. So this is DATAD. You can use it in select, group by, having, order by, and where. And you can also use it in the from clause if you are creating a derived table, in which case it would be more like being in the select list. So date add, it allows me to take a date, which can be in various formats. It can be in date, date time, date time offset, date time two, small date time. And in fact, it could be time. It doesn't have to have a date component at all. And then it allows me to say, okay, I don't want this. I want to increase it by a second, for instance, or 30 minutes or 12 hours or four days or whatever you wish. So date add open bracket, three arguments. The first one does not go in little quotation marks. It's just written out as is. And then the second one positive goes forward, negatives goes back. And then what you are changing. So that is date add. Thank you for joining me in this video. If you like it, then please click the like button. And why not subscribe and click the bell next to it so you'll be notified of any new videos. Thank you very much for watching this. If you are interested in learning SQL Server, why not have a look at my courses? Have a look at the description further below. Thank you for watching this and keep learning.